I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Hello. Um, so I'm going to make, make, hopefully this will be a short video. Um, this is actually, uh, uh, I'm trying to p pose a question. Um, I'd like to hear, um, I read a lot of apologetics, um, and I'm, you know, I, I'm pretty familiar with the common ones, the common arguments against the Bible and the common apologetics in support of them, uh, especially addressing Bible contradictions or things that don't make sense. Um, but I, here's a couple that I haven't really heard brought forth um, as Bible criticisms, and I'd love to hear um, what what uh, what the apologists have to say about this. Um, there's in two separate points from two completely part, different parts of the Bible, um, but they're ones that have, that I've always I've kind of wondered about for a long time. Um, the first um, is in the Gospels, um, and it's the story of when uh, the Pharisees and the Romans came to arrest Jesus. Um, they they were brought of course you know he was betrayed by by Judas Iscariot and Judas Iscariot led them to where they were hiding or camped out or something and um it states in the uh, three of the gospels uh, the synoptic gospels that uh that someone drew a sword and cut off the the ear of the slave um of one of the high priests um and uh i think it's in Luke uh Jesus actually reattaches the ear and the other in the other Gospels, he doesn't. Um, and in John, he specifically states the name of the slave. I think it was Malth, Malthus or something like that. Anyway, um, and I don't, I don't recall the name. And uh, John also uh, identifies the person who cut the ear off was Simon Peter. Um, so we get this story. Basically, um, you know, it the, the purpose of it. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna back up here real quick because I I want in my current job right now, which is very very different from my. Uh, career as a biologist I'm actually a storyteller um, um, which is kind of very different so I, I study I read up a lot about stories um, mythologies and stories and I um, I do this at the grade school here and I, I one of the things that you see in stories a lot this element is the um, where you have to suspend belief uh, for the purpose of the story and this works you know this is it works great I mean it's I guess an analogy I would use is that um, you know I I'm a huge Superman fan as well, um, and I or Star Trek fan, and I am willing to suspend belief for the purpose of enjoying the story. Um, now that that that's fine, provided you understand it's a story. When you start claiming that it's a fact or literal truth, uh, then the suspension of belief kind of it, you, you have to really critically examine this belief. And so you see a lot of these Bible stories, Jonah and the whale and stuff. If you read them as stories. Um, they're 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 fantastic. They're incredible stories. They're you know they have all of the elements um, of great storytelling. Um, but if you start saying they're true, then you have to start poking at the flaws in them. And in this one, I found I think there's a big flaw in the story of Simon Peter and the severed ear. Um, the flaw being, supposedly, there's an armed contingent um, of Pharisees and and uh, the basically what counted as the Roman police at the time. Um, they're heavily armed. They says they're armed with clubs and swords. Jesus points out that you know, why, you know, you came to arrest me like a bandit. Um, you know, why did you need such an armed contingent? Uh, anyway, one of the people, one of the disciples, Simon Peter, attacks one of this this group of armed men and cuts off his ear. Then they arrest Jesus, and the rest of the disciples flee. Right. Um, the flaw with it is, is ye. I would be willing to, I absolute there's no possible way why did the person who cut off the ear survive um if he survived why wasn't he arrested too you know when the police come to your door and you attack them um say you, they come to your door to with an arrest warrant for somebody in your house and oh you attack them attack them with a kitchen knife what do you think's going to happen are they just going to arrest the guy and walk away and leave you holding your knife are they going to shoot you in the head or arrest you at the very least after they disarm you and probably kick the snot out of you? The point is, it just doesn't make sense. Why Why did they just leave this? That, that's that's a real sort of a glaring hole in the story. In fact, Simon Peter then goes on to deny Christ later. Um, but anyway, it just doesn't make sense. That That's a, a big flaw. And I'm going to... Um, I'm probably going to take longer than I anticipated on this. Um, 
The other thing I want to talk about, um, I wanted to mention, is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, um, which is a fascinating story. Um, it's you know obviously a, a whole lot of um, biblically inspired homophobia stems from that. In fact, the word sodomy comes from uh, that story. Um, but the the one thing I've never seen explained or even addressed um, by apologists or um, biblical literalists is, uh, okay, now God told Lot that the um, he was going to destroy this wicked city, um, and Lot begged for the, you know to, to save the city. He did the whole you know if I can find five good men or fifty whatever it is he kept you know basically stating please don't destroy the city it's where I live and God gave him a chance to redeem the city. Um, the angels uh, that God sent uh, had to be barricaded inside Lot's house because they were going to be gang raped on the street. Lot offered his daughters. Now I'm not going to ignore the whole. Um, you know, the the morality of offering up your virgin daughter to a rapist mob, how that makes you a righteous person, I don't know. But anyway, that's a whole separate issue. My point is, is um, now I've lived in bad neighborhoods before, um, and you know, you know, it, and it sucks. But no bad neighborhood that I've ever lived in was so bad that you had to endure constant homosexual rape. Okay. I mean, that's 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 a bad neighborhood by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it would seem to me that if I were to live in such a neighborhood, hell, I, I lived in a neighborhood where I got I, I got mugged, um, and I moved out, and and I would have I would have at the time welcomed brimstone destroying that at least that neighborhood. Um, it was a miserable place to live, but Lot argues to save the city. First, why would you want to live there in the first place? Um, I, I, that that, that I, I, the reasons I, it just confounds me. Why would you want to live there, and why would you argue for to save that that kind of a city? I mean, you'd have to be awfully forgiving. Um, I you know, I mean, what what was the deal? Is it like you know, I don't know, you know, if you can endure the constant homosexual rape, the Thai food is exquisite, you know, or something. What what? Why would you want to protect that kind of a city? I guess. Um, it just kind of—it's just a strange thing of it, you know. You kind of when I—I I remember hearing the story when I was a kid. It's just like, why? Why was he? You know, I mean, I understand you know loyalty to your home and stuff, but that—that's that, extreme. That—that's just my take on it. I just—I'd like to hear you know if there's any you know maybe I missed something in the story. Maybe there's more to it than that. Um, you know, was it? Um, maybe Lot was exaggerating it. Um, you know, my, my one take on it that I had thinking about it is you know. All we have is Lot's version of the story, right? Since apparently he's the only survivor. His wife turned to salt. He's the only survivor. You know, maybe he, uh, like the great Bill Hicks said, you know, left an app, left a cigarette burning, you know. The city burns to the ground, and everybody's like, oh, shit. Um, you get, get God, yeah, God did it, you know, or something. You know, maybe that was the deal. I don't know. But who knows? Anyway, it's an interesting, uh, I'd like to hear if any any apologists out there, any biblical literalists want to try to take on these and I mean, and I'm asking, I'm, I'm making light, but I want a serious, I'm seriously asking, I'm not trying to ask as mockery, I'm asking as a serious question, what is the, what, what's, what is, what is the actual official take on that? I'd, I'd like to know. All right, well, thank you. Bye.